Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and in today's video, we're talking about the four distinct subtypes or states of an INFP, right? What I want to show you in this video is that you are being pulled between four different archetypal forces. The desire to realize your own dreams and to self-actualize and individuate. Then, secondly, the desire to transform and change yourself, to improve and become better. Third, the desire to serve somebody or something or some cause that you care about and feel passionate about. And fourth of all, the desire to protect yourself and to make sure that you are safe and comfortable. And the desire to show judgment. These four forces can be best represented by four key Jungian archetypes. And Jung spoke of the self as driven by and supported by four key archetypal structures. First, the archetypal structure of the hero or warrior. And this is the desire to realize your own dreams in the world, right? Second of all, the desire to transform yourself, to be creative, the desire to realize your dreams in the world, to change yourself somehow to learn something new, to go outside your comfort zone into the world of the unconscious and to bring something new to light. Third, we can speak of the desire for service, servitude, modesty, humility, the desire to serve a more important cause than yourself, to do something good for the world, the desire for contributing in some way to others and to people you care about or to a cause that is important to you. This structure can be represented by the lover archetype. This creative urge can be best represented by the magician archetype. Finally, we can speak of a fourth desire, and that is the desire of the king or the queen, the desire to rule, the desire to show higher judgment and control and self-control, to be wise. Thanks to all these four contradictory forces, yourself is kept relatively intact. Your able to bring new unconscious potential into light through navigating the magician and your own creativity. You're able to discover in yourself your own power through the hero or warrior archetype. And you're capable of showing self-control and restraint through your own inner judge, king or queen. Finally, you're able to give to the world and to show compassion and empathy thanks to the lover. Oh my gosh, it was so cold I had to put some gloves on. By the way, if you enjoyed this video and you're curious about this subject, don't forget to subscribe. I've been making videos for more than 10 years about psychology and I have a lot of experience to share. Never mind the snow, by the way. I'm currently visiting my family in Sweden and enjoying minus degrees and <laughs> white winter. So that's absolutely lovely and it's a great time for me to get in touch with and recharge and connect with my own desire for stability, control and security, right? Because Sweden represents to me my own home country where I grew up. It represents history, my, who I used to be. And that's a fascinating part of myself. The king or queen represents the past while the magician represents the future you and while the hero represents the present you. And in so whenever you want to connect with yourself and who you are. Just present yourself, become yourself, to present yourself to the world, to be present, to be here and now, to pay attention to yourself, your own feelings and thoughts, and to speak your thoughts when you feel them, when you have them, to be where you are, what your thoughts are. And if you ever want to change yourself or make a difference in your life, feel free to have a conversation with the future you. Connect with the part of you that hasn't come out yet. Know that there is a part of you that doesn't exist yet, but will exist in the future. Just as there is a past you, a history, something that made you who you are, your personal experiences, the things that brought you where you are today. To understand these four archetypes in yourself, I want you to recall four different situations. I want you to think about a time where you chose safety and comfort, a time where you decided to show self-restraint, a desire where you might have felt passionate about something and might have wanted to do something, but decided to take a step back, to recharge and to think ahead and to strategize. That was because of your own inner judgment, and that was because of the king or queen archetype within yourself. Then I want you to think about a situation where you did something daring, something crazy, something reckless, where you spoke out of turn or did something different than what you would normally do, when you went outside your comfort zone into a world of the unknown, took a risk, started something new that you had never done before, 
and had no idea how to do. You did this because of your own inner magician. Then I want to think of, I want you to think of a situation where you did something good for somebody else, not in service of your own selfishness, but because of your genuine desire to give to the world, to show empathy, to be kind, to do something for the world. Finally, I want you to consider a time or a situation where you did something for yourself, something that allowed you to step out of the mold, something that allowed you to go outside the crowd and community to do and pursue your own passion, something you cared about, something important to you. A time where you spoke out about something that was important to you, perhaps a value or a cause that was you cared about deeply. A time where you showed confidence in yourself. Most of us have had situations in all these areas, but perhaps you show an inclination, a tendency to be ruled by one of these archetypes. Perhaps in the, this later part of your life, you've been a little bit too self-judging. Perhaps you've been a bit too self-controlled. Perhaps your king or queen have taken the charge. If you're trying to be creative and write a new novel or create art or learn something new, the perfectionism of the king or queen can be absolutely debilitating. It can cause the magician to become the chained magician, controlled by its own urge or desire to self-destroy, the desire to judge your own creativity before it's even gotten started, to judge a painting after the first line instead of looking at the complete picture. Creativity deserves and allows and requires you to let go of your own judgment, to do something for fun. Creativity is an act of play, and it's an act of modest play. It's not a call or attempt to be amazing or to be awesome. It's a call to be authentic, to share or do something or express something within yourself. It doesn't care if it's better than something else. It simply cares about the expression of itself and its unconscious potential. It has, it sees an image or a potential with something and it decides to explore what that potential might be. On the other hand, perhaps you've been lately in the grip of the magician archetype. Perhaps to the point where you lost your better judgment. Perhaps every single day has been a new leap into something different. Perhaps you are constantly in a state of doubt and anxiety because you're constantly going outside your comfort zone in a way that is hurting you, draining you and exhausting you. Perhaps those creative whims and urges that unconscious potential is making it hard for you to maintain a conscious structure of yourself. Where, who am I? What kind of a person am I? What am I supposed to do with my life? I don't know, because everything is a creative potential possibility. In those times, it can be time to learn to show self-restraint and self-control through developing a better relationship to the king or queen. On the other hand, perhaps you've been a bit selfish lately. Perhaps you've been primarily concerned with your own ambitions, your own vision, your own ideals. Perhaps you've been a bit too overconfident lately. Perhaps you've been pushing for what you want, for what you care about, without concern for other people, without listening to feedback from others, without desire to be kind, to under show understanding, to listen, to, under like, to relate to the world around you, right? If that's the case, you might be a little bit in the grip of the warrior archetype. You might be a bit at war with the world, right? Because you might be putting yourself before everyone else, right? If that's what it is, you might want to consider getting more in touch with your own inner lover because there is a part of you that wants to show empathy, that wants to be modest, that wants to listen, that wants, that wants to understand other people's point of view, to hear other people out, to learn from other people, to serve rather than necessarily to lead, right? Or perhaps this archetype has been dominating your life, right? Perhaps you found yourself consistently putting other people before yourself listening to and doing what other people want, but never expressing or speaking your own truth, right? We need to understand and connect with our own inner warrior or hero because we need to learn to self-actualize, to individuate, to speak out for our truth, to express and to know who we are and to represent ourselves honestly to the outer world. But we also need to understand and connect to the lover in order to nurture within ourselves those kind, modest and duty-bound, responsible traits that make out a lover, that make out a person capable of genuine care, empathy, and compassion, right? So those are the four subtypes, and if you want videos about your personality type and how those subtypes might represent themselves in your life, 
feel free to send me a message or let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.